Good evening. Come on, good evening. I know you're tired. You are such indispensable life changers, I swear. It is an absolute honor that I get the opportunity to, to stand before you and share part of my life. I obviously wrote this before that happened. Uh, I want to first thank a couple of women that, in terms of my avid life, I would not be here if it wasn't for them. And so I want to first thank Kathy Simmons, Kelly Zulueta, Jennifer, Jen, Jenny Curos, and Christy McMullen. And the reason I'm... And I want to thank them because I'm, I'm not always easy to deal with, and they accept me for everything that I am. And what's great about them is that they continue to guide me to become the things that I know that I'm not yet. So I appreciate that, ladies, very much. Nine years ago, I sat in a ballroom, not very much different than this one right now, at the downtown Atlanta Hilton. I had no idea what I was doing. And it was fortunate that I was there when Stacy Valdez and Isaiah Moore were the featured guest speakers. The reason for that is because they gave me hope. It has always been my goal that I would get the opportunity to do the same. Finally, I am. So I was trying to think of a way to explain AVID, and I thought of a great analogy. Our kids are like someone who has a lot of potential, but have a broken leg. <laughs> that broken leg is keeping them from getting them where they want to go. I wanted to emphasize that point so emphatically that I willingly broke my leg. <laughs> I then had surgery and had eight screws in a plate implanted to illustrate that visual. That's just how committed I am to AVID. <laughs> All right, so that might not be true. But uh, my good friend and colleague Ben Solomon asked me to start with that. So uh, on to my story. Now, Adam, prepositions never go at the beginning of a sentence. These words were ingrained into my head every day during sixth grade English lessons at the dining room table. Without a college degree at the time, my mother was under the tutelage of Saxon and Abeka. She did her absolute best as a homeschool teacher and mother, but I resented her for pummeling me with that statement until now. I feel that since we are here as educators who are exalting the powers of education, I would take this time to show my mother how much I learned. Mom, I'm actually going to start every single one of my lines with a prepositional phrase, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> About this time 10 years ago, <laughs> I was a recent college graduate who had not planned past his final days of post-secondary education. Above all, I just wanted to get after, out of school after, after toiling for seven years, trying to find my life's purpose. Across my forehead, the word sucker must have been inscribed when I decided that I was going to change lives through the pursuit of molding young, impressionable minds. After my first year, I had merely survived trying to make the lives of the youth in my classes better than I had found them. Against all odds, I was asked to become the AVID coordinator after a year of teaching and no teaching degree. Along with a sense of pure horror at the idea of undertaking such a monumental task was a man questioning every decision he had made up to this point. Among the stupidest things that I've done, including believing that this first generation college student was going to breeze through college, was deciding to take on a role that I was definitely ill prepared for. Around the time that I was defining what an ideal AVID student was to a group of equally unsure parents, at the exact moment in which sweat fell down my brow from a lack of air conditioning in a room of 150 people, and Kathy Simmons can actually attest to that, she was there, I realized the brevity of my situation. Before I knew it, my life was going to irreversibly change. Behind their lost eyes, I could see that if we were going to do this, it was going to have to be together. Below average could only partially sum up how people had measured them up to this point. Beneath years of being underestimated by human being, as human beings, 
were just individuals that needed someone to say, you can, but more importantly, that actually believed it. Beside one another, we trudged aimlessly through our first year of tutorials, binder checks, and Cornell notes. Between you and I, I was terrified every day of those 180. By the end of the first year, I was actually ready to call it quits. Down to the podium I walked to give my first and last avid end of the year banquet speech. During my, my planned last moments as an avid coordinator, I looked upon a group of individuals for whom I had spent an entire tireless year with. Except they were not rejoicing in our perceived successes. They were crying. For they had found in me a person that they believe would make them something they could be proud of. From that moment, I knew I had found my life's calling. In the years that followed, things have not been easy. In front of parents, administrators, and fellow teachers, I have relentlessly fought for the rights of the doubted. Inside, I have been battered, bruising, and yes, from time to time, broken. Instead of allowing the current failed state of most modern education to spit me out like so many others into an existence I know I would live to regret, like so many students who walk through our halls of academia expecting to be taught, only to be told what to think and how to think, near every single one of us, we have seen people fall prey to these social injustices. Of this, I am certain. Off must come the teaching, off must come the labeling that has come from our obsession with testing. On must come an education where we look to inspire the whole person onto a life that belongs to the world, not just to themselves. On top of the tired remnants of desks that have separated kids for silence, out of lectures leading for, to limitations, outside the box built for them to behave, over it must be our new mindset, past the mistakes that we should have already learned from. Since as human beings we understand the power of reflection, through classes built to educate students at every level, to provide skills necessary to a rapidly changing world, towards students who not only learn to love, but genuinely love to learn, underneath it all are programs supporting these efforts like AVID. Until success in school is an absolute science, up that ladder we must ascend, up to the point that we are worried about our legacy to not only others, but to ourselves. With the risk of failure and absolute necessity, within every one of us is the desire to incite change. But without every single one of you, this will cease to become a reality. Thank you.